In today's video, I want to teach you how to use Microsoft Loop. I'll be the first to admit that when Loop was first announced, I thought it was a very unfinished product and I really didn't see much use for the tool. But after using it for several months, I can tell you my first impressions were wrong. And I can honestly say after using it for a few months across a few different teams, it is an amazingly productive tool that makes information sharing and collaboration that much easier. And that's really why I'm making this video, to help other people get started and use Microsoft Loop effectively. Of course, if you do like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And if you're supercharged the way as your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. Before we get started, I want to talk about where Loop can actually live. And that is really in anywhere you have a web browser. But there are a few core components where I see Loop being really effective. The first one, of course, is being in Microsoft Teams, because that's where Teams naturally collaborate. Then, of course, there is the transition from Teams into email, because that's where a lot of communication also happens. And then you have the Loop application or Loop Online, where you can specifically work in Loop and focus on whatever you're looking at uh, by using it in the application. It helps you focus on just that task at hand. Um, of course, Loop is accessible on the Teams application on your phone, whether it's iOS or Android, and of course, whether you have a PC, Mac, or using Teams online as well. The first thing I wanna look at here is actually how you can download Loop on your Windows PC, and that's as simple as going into the Microsoft Store and then searching for Loop. You can see here we're in the Windows Store. I'm gonna search for Loop. And then I'm gonna go ahead and download it. The first one here called Microsoft Loop, it is free. And then we're just simply gonna select on the download or get button. Once Loop is finished downloading and it's a very small download, I'm simply gonna open it up. It's gonna ask me to sign in. Then it's gonna also ask me to pin it to the taskbar and the start bar. I'm gonna pin it to both, I'm gonna go allow. And then I'm just gonna hit the sign in button. Now you're gonna sign in with your Microsoft 365 account. And there you go, your loop has actually started. I would recommend in your own time actually going through the basics here of loop where you can actually look at the welcome page. On the left hand side, you've got check out the basics where it talks about uh, the pages and the workspaces. It gives you some examples of what you can do inside of a loop. There are some inspiration here around um, the different ideas that you can use loop for, for things like uh, making it a project kickoff or taking meeting notes. I use it for um, project meetings as well as uh, meeting notes and basically anything to do with the team. Um, sending feedback, this is where you can send feedback directly to Microsoft about Loop. And then of course the next steps are, well, actually I've never actually looked at this page, let's ignore that. So let's explore the Loop application uh, as it is. So I'm gonna go into the Loop in the top left hand corner and this is gonna bring us to our workspaces. It's a very simple layout, it's very um, easy to use. And you can see here it has your original workspace, which is uh, inbuilt by Microsoft. Then you can, of course, look at your recent components and pages. And this shows you everything from every loop you've worked in. Uh, so you've got the option of meeting notes and that ties to the teams, or you've got the option of all, and that shows you all of your loop components. And then you have an ideas page as well, where you can create a new component and start putting ideas here. Uh, and you can create it for yourself, or you can share it with your team. What I'm gonna do now is actually just go into the top right hand corner and select on the plus button and I'm gonna create a new workspace. But I'll also be honest, I use this more as a Teams feature rather than Loop itself here, um, but there's use cases for both. So we're gonna create a new workspace and we're gonna call this 2024 Video Ideas. Then I can add an emoji here if I wanted to. I'm gonna type in video, see what pops up, and camera. Awesome. We can update the cover photo with some stock ones. Uh, let's find something cool, or we can even search for something. So I'm gonna call this, uh, or search for video, or YouTube maybe. Uh, let's go with an abstract stock one for now. We'll select on that, update it, and now I've got a nice cover photo as well. So once I hit create, it will actually take us to this uh, untitled page and you can see on the left hand side we have video ideas as the overall workspace and then underneath that we can keep adding pages and links as well on the right hand side. You can choose to sort and view. Uh, you can see the tree of activity or you can see when pages were last opened. Because we've just created this 
there's really not much in terms of the view, but once you start using it, that's a very handy feature to use as well. Um, here, we can go ahead and add icons and add covers to our loop. I'm just gonna grab a different one. Again, this is just personalizing it for you and your team. And then you can add an icon if you like. Let's drop that in here. And that just makes it a bit more, a bit more personal to yourself and your team. I'm gonna call this video ideas. And then down the bottom, we can just start typing away. The beautiful thing here is that this is actually accessible anywhere. And then you can share this with people and they work with you in live time. And then down the bottom, you can actually see there are a few different templates from a blank page, which we're currently on. Uh, project brief, team decisions, uh, project planning. But let's actually look at the template gallery. And you can see there are a lot of different templates. So this helps you get started straight away with Loop. Uh, I'm gonna into bad brainstorming ideas. I love that. I uh, I love that name. And then this is gonna give you some basic components to get started with your team. And then of course everything is fully customizable. But I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna go use this template. So I think it's quite cool. And it's gonna drop it in and we can start customizing it straight away. Um, of course, because I put a template over the one we're working, uh, the cover photo and the icon that I put did remove. But we can always add those back in. Um, so you can see here, it gives you things like progress trackers where you can actually go ahead and select how the project is going. You can add in bits and pieces of you know basic text. You can go ahead and have these, um, these boxes with voting buttons and all that sort of stuff. And then you have action items as well. And this is really quite cool because you can get started with the template without having to build it from scratch. But now what I wanna do is actually go and create a brand new page and show you some ideas of what you can do when you build from scratch and some quick tools as well. If we were working away here, you can see it gives you uh, two hints using the forward slash to insert something or the app mention to find. And I think this is a really handy feature in a lot of the new 365 apps. By simply pressing forward slash, it's gonna pull up this amazing uh, tab of all these different things you can put in like a table, a checklist, a bullet point, a numbered list, um, and if we keep scrolling down, you can change the style. Then you've got some templates uh, and you've got communications and emojis and media. This is really all done by simply selecting and pressing forward slash. And then you can go ahead and scroll to find what you're after. Or you can start typing in, hit enter, and then you've got your bullet point there. Cool, you can keep writing away. Backspace, backspace, sorry, enter, enter. You know, forward slash. Then, uh, what I like is actually the templates down the bottom, where you've got a task list and a voting uh, table, a progress track as well as Q and A. I really like the task list because what this allows you to do is on the left hand side, you can see it's got the little tick box, so you can put the task name of uh, create loop video, and then you can assign it to somebody. Uh, right now, I've only shared this with myself. So I'm gonna pop myself in Adele, but you can see here it actually pulls in your organization as well. So if I start typing in someone else's name, like Megan, for example, I can select Megan. And then if I wanna notify her of this, I can simply press the plus button. That'll bring it into the loop. Or if not, I can still keep Megan's name against this, but she doesn't need to be notified that I've put it in here. Makes it easy for me to track, but it doesn't mean I necessarily need to give loop access to everybody. And then of course I can drop in a due date, say next week. Um, and then if you, oh, let's just get rid of Megan's notification. And then of course, if you right click on the title, you can go ahead and insert, resize, copy the task or expand the table. And if we go insert, we can just drop in another task below. Um, and this is a great way of just dropping in tasks and keeping track of everything. Another thing I love is actually if you press the forward slash again, you can also put in a progress tracker. I use this quite a bit because this one's a little bit more customizable. Of course, at the top, you can change the name and if, you know update video idea test, just so you know what it looks like. You can update the name by simply double clicking and typing over this. You still have the owner field where it works with your organization's ID. You can get the progress tracker already, and you can customize what these look like, but also what they say. So this could be uh, removed. 
and we can make it red. We can change the progress. We could actually delete that option or you can go ahead and add more progress trackers in here. Actually, no, you can't. And if you wanted to add or delete a column here, you'd simply hover in between the two owner and progress or just in between two columns, select on the plus button, which is sort of hidden right now by my mouse, but there's a plus button there. Then we can add something else in here. I use this quite a bit by tagging people and by tracking where their progress is up to. And it's really, really quite cool because they can edit it as well. On the left hand side, under all of these tasks, you actually have ways of sorting them or by expanding columns or by hiding the view. Uh, so you can customize this as well. And if your loop gets really big, on the left hand side, there's actually the six dots where you can grab something and move it around the page. So I can grab this and bring it all the way up. And you can rearrange your page like that. I'm just going to control Z and then off we go. Sometimes your loop can get really quite big and you don't want to share the entire loop workspace or the entire page with someone, but you want to create a component out of just that section. Say for example, I wanted people's ideas on these video ideas or these tasks, but I didn't want them to see everything. I could actually select on the dots on the left hand side and then I can go create loop component. This is going to select just that section there because I pull tasks out to only grabbing the tasks. And then on the right hand side, I can actually share the location, copy the component and then see who has access to this. So if I copy this component, it's going to create a link for me. And then I can go ahead and drop the component here into something like an email or into a team site and I can paste it and someone else can start editing. So if I jump into teams, for example, and paste that component, This will allow people to start editing just under the task section, but not actually see the entire component itself. So this is great when you work with multiple uh, teams or on a big project, you can actually just give them the components that are relevant to them without giving access to the entire workbook. And I think that's really quite cool. Uh, and then of course, when you are putting things into teams or sharing it, one thing you have to look for is permissions. Every organization is different, but you can see in this one here, it says people in your organization with this link we're gonna select on that button and we're gonna choose what level of permissions these people have. So they can edit or yours might be set on can view. So just make sure you can have it on can edit and then you can choose whether it's people in your organization can edit, currently people in the chat or people with existing access. So just make sure before you paste something in, you check the security settings as well and then simply hit send. This is gonna send it away and now in the team chat here, Joanna and Megan and myself can start editing this loop component. And this is a test to show. I've just typed that in and I'm gonna jump back to that loop component and you'll see straight away, it's gonna pop up there. So people can work on this in live time and they can work on just that component itself. So it's really quite cool. Uh, of course, whether you're in Teams or in Outlook or on the web or in the Loop component or the Loop uh, app, you do have the options of sharing the locations of understanding where something lives. So right now, this task, for example, it tells me that it is not only in my Loop workspace, but it's also a component in Teams. If this was pasted in an email, for example, as well, the shared locations would also show you where it lives in both Teams and Outlook and of course your Loop component. The beauty of that is that you can be across different applications but still continue working and editing on that same document. I'll show you what that looks like now. I'm gonna copy again this component, jump over to an email, and then I'm just gonna paste in that Loop component. We're gonna send it over to Grady. and then I'm gonna hit send. So now Grady also is gonna get access to this loop component. And if Grady wanted to, even the email here, I'm gonna open this up. Even though this is a sent email, we can actually continue start working away, which is awesome. This is editing a sent email because loop is live. Uh, it's awesome that Grady, if Grady was online, could start editing and working in this loop. But also, as you'll see in Teams and the Loop uh, page, 
on the right hand side in the corner you have the shared locations again and it shows you everywhere this loop component lives and people can keep working on it so the beauty here is that whether you're working in the loop application whether you're working in teams or whether it's in email you can keep working on that loop component and people can keep adding to it uh, which just means that there is no issue in terms of finding where it lives, but also there, there is no issue in putting information into it because it's accessible from so many different places. And that for me is the power of loop. Of course, you don't just need to create a loop component within the loop app. You can also do it in Teams as well. So I'm gonna open up a new chat and we're gonna have a chat with Megan, and then down the bottom here, where you can start typing, there's actually the loop button as well. We're gonna select on loop, and then it's gonna give us a range of different components that we can start creating. I'm just gonna create a progress tracker. Hi hey Megan. Let's work on the progress tracker. Then I'm gonna hit send. Of course, we can edit and customize beforehand, or because it's loop and it's live, you can edit it and customize it while you're, you're working away. But now you've got this progress tracker that Megan can start editing and working in. And then if you wanted to, you could jump back to your emails. You can go into loop. You can also add in a loop component here um, by adding in a brand new loop component. For this one, we're actually gonna just turn it into a Q&A. And this one is gonna go over to Lee. And then I'm gonna hit send so that Lee can start working on this as well. So we just created a loop component there in both uh, teams talking to somebody. Then we created it in Outlook as well just by selecting on the loop component. And, we, and now if we go back over to the loop application, in the top left hand corner we're going to select on loop and you can see here we have our 2024 video ideas which is a workspace and it's i guess a really it's a body of work but then you have recent components and pages and what you'll see here is that this is actually going to show you all the recent components and pages that you've been working on as well so it's a really great way of keeping track and finding all the loops that you've been involved in because sometimes you don't create it people share it with you you can jump into your recent components and you can see it from here you have two options here. One is looking at all, which is what we're doing right now, or the second is looking at meeting notes. Meeting notes is really great. It's inbuilt into Microsoft Teams, and it means that everyone in that team, as long as they're in your organization, can add to the meeting notes, and it just helps keep track of notes for that meeting, as well as create a live document. So let's jump into Teams now and see what this looks like. So we're in Teams and I'm gonna show you my favorite way of actually getting started with meeting notes. And that's actually putting notes in before the meeting starts. So I'm gonna create a brand new meeting here. Let's open this up. I'm just gonna call in Grady. Loop, component test. And then down the bottom here, you've got your standard things for a meeting. You've got the agenda or you've got the, the meeting details. Then underneath that, you have the agenda. On the left hand side of that, the little icon here is actually a loop component. So as soon as you select on start typing in an agenda, it actually drops in an agenda for you. And I'm just gonna pull this in and say, loop meeting details test, just something like that. But you can see we've already turned it into a loop component, meaning it's live for everyone in that meeting. Uh, of course, we can go ahead and customize it to our heart's content by simply pressing the forward slash button or the at button to start tagging people but i'm going to hit send on this and now before the meeting started we could have dropped in all our meeting notes or our agenda items and it could have turned into a live document that when the meeting starts but also when it finishes we can continue working on it so if i open up the meeting now you can see the notes page is automatically going to open up and we can start working on it here. So as we're having a meeting, we can start adding in our follow-up tasks and tagging people, adding our notes, adding our details, or customizing it as we go. And then of course, after the meeting, we can jump back to our loop application. And then you can see here, loop component test, that was, that was the name of the meeting. Um, 
it is right here and then we can continue working on it from here as well I know this is a long video but that's because when you start using loop there's actually so much the program can do but the biggest takeaway for me is that irrespective of which device people are using or whether they're using the application teams or outlook they can edit loop components which makes it easier to share and put information into the system of course if you guys did like this video let me know by giving a thumbs up and if you want to supercharge the way your computer hit that subscribe button as well thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye